Good morning. Welcome to worship on this uh, wonderful Father's Day. And uh, it is, it's a blessing for us to join together. Before we begin worship, um, we want to introduce a song to you this morning that will be our closing song at the end of worship this morning. It's called Let the Redeemed. And we're going to go through it um, one time, and then we'll ask you to join with us in singing the first verse and, a, and then the chorus, just so it's a little bit more familiar, so that when we close worship this morning, um, you'll have the melody uh, maybe a little bit more in your head and your mind. So anyway, let the redeemed. Welcome to worship. Grateful to be with you. Uh, happy Father's Day to the dads in the house. Uh, my sons have threatened to call today, and uh, it, it'll be the first time when I see their name, I won't think, what car now, right? <laughs> They've got their own, got their own insurance. Love that. Um, but happy Father's Day to you. After worship, um, in fact, right after our sending, I'm not going to greet you outside the doors. I'm going to walk down the steps and we're going to have a rededication of the stained glass windows that so many of you took part in refurbishing. And we are grateful to have sacred art that points to our Savior in many ways. So that will take three or four minutes out there. And then there is food galore. Um, the Werners have, have uh, put that together for us and Thrivent uh, put in some funds so come enjoy uh, some eats and some beverages. Uh, you don't have to stay long, but we would love for you to be a part of that. Then folks that do stay, you're going to be welcomed back in. We have a description of the uh, artwork in each of these stained glass windows that may be of help to you and nameplates on each as well. 
I'm going to invite Mark Peterson up, um, who has been a great part of this project, he and his wife Judy. Uh, in fact, why don't we give him and Judy a hand as he comes forward. I just wanted to uh, thank everyone uh, for all the help. Uh, in the background, through the office, uh, donations especially, uh, we, we, give, we give all this uh, glory and honor to God for this project, that's for sure, because <clears throat> it, uh, it was a real miracle on having it come through the way it did, and uh, I just wanted to uh, thank everyone that uh, helped out, you know, over the process of, of getting these windows in, so thank you very much. And they're done. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> just as a side note, uh, tomorrow uh, we're actually installing all the gable vents that uh, are outside and that needed refurbishing. We actually uh, are able to uh, purchase a, a custom vent that we measured. We measured all the gables out, built a custom vent that we will be putting up tomorrow so <clears throat> hopefully the uh, church is going to look uh, pretty darn nice uh, <laughs> you know after uh, Tuesday so and and part of the uh, support of the windows also helps support that so uh, thank you again for all of that it's it's really been a blessing thank you all right thank you Mark That really was uh, a great example of answered prayer as our board of directors uh, brought that before you. We thought there'd be a first run of, of giving and then a small loan and you paid for all of it and the gable vents as well. So thank you for uh, all rowing in the same direction. And there was answered prayer as we prayed for uh, Jonathan and Allie, who, uh, the husband and wife team that did the refurbishing, who were high on scaffolds and high winds, like there would be that in Idaho Falls. Um, but they, I think every day they found some wind and uh, God kept them safe. We've met all kinds of neighbors who are interested in the project. So it's been a beautiful thing. In uh, or the back of your bulletin, there's reminders about Vacation Bible School, which starts uh, a week from uh, tomorrow. And some highlights, uh, there is a meal, community meal for all of us Bring your neighbors as well. We hope some of our neighbors around here come. That'll be Tuesday night at 6 p.m. We'd love it if you would sign up and let us know you're coming and how many will be in your party. Um, again, bring a neighbor. We would love for sign-ups if you could help set up uh, before 6 o'clock or help clean up afterward. And if you have a shade canopy that you can loan, we would love to borrow it. And uh, even better, if you could set it up so we don't lose our fingers. Uh, those are tricky sometimes, but that would be helpful as well. And let's see, volunteers, there's a uh, meal after Bible study next week. And it's required that we sit together and talk about the safety of the children who will be under our care. So please plan on being here with us. Um, it's always well done and we'll feed you. Um, and continue, would you, uh, to keep praying for those who will be coming to us. One uh, grandmother stopped in uh, last week, end of the week, and was so excited that her four grandchildren could come and hear about Jesus on the three days, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. With that, I'm going to invite forward Brian Northcutt, one of our members. Um, it's actually uh, on the uh, board of directors as the co-chair. Did we told you that? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> that wasn't his, uh, you know, way to get in here today. You can go ahead. But uh, Brian teaches at Hope Lutheran with Melanie, and great things are happening there. And he has, uh, there's a flyer in the bulletin that will help as well, but he has some information to share. Brian, thanks for doing that. Hello, everyone. Um, we come to a crossroads at Hope this past year. Uh, we have a new administration. We desperately need a new curriculum. And we wanted to create a new character and identity in the community. And we decided that we're going to go in the way of classical education. And so I wanted to explain a little bit about classical education. Um, but I'll try to be brief. I could go on speaking about this for a long, long time. <laughs> um, it starts with the Romans, basically. 
Um, they developed much in their culture using logic and grammar. And they even developed a steam engine. But due to their pagan polytheistic philosophies, they didn't develop it any further than that. What we see when Christianity comes on the scene is they develop a Trinitarian formula that we have in the Nicene Creed. And that created a geometric, geometrical view of reality for them, very clear view. And that allowed them to think and to figure things out. And through the medieval period, don't listen to all the rumors. It wasn't the Dark Ages. It was actually very prolific. Um, but we come to the scholastics and then, of course, the reformers, Martin Luther. Right? You've heard of him, correct? Um, he called out to the wealthy barons of Germany to start a public education system that included children of all ages and of all cl social classes, rich and poor. This was the first time in history that this had been done. He then mentored a Swiss reformer named Farrell who took it back to Switzerland. And then Calvin came on the scene a little while later and uh, reformed it a little bit more spread it to Scotland through John Knox and England through the Puritans who then brought it to the colonies in America. All of this together led to the scientific revolution. And this is how our education system worked in America. It was classical education, very similar to it for the most part. Well then in 1900, a man, a philosopher named John Dewey came on the scene. He had great influence on Western education and he thought, eh, we didn't really need logic in education anymore. We just needed to teach them the facts and the concepts. And so while um, classical education teaches the students to learn to climb the mountain and reach the knowledge at its peak, he believed the educator should bring the knowledge down the mountain to the student, handing them the knowledge directly. What does that mean? Well, it means they learn facts, but not the skills and how to learn and think critically. Classical education at Hope will provide a uniform curriculum for us and instruction for the elementary that weaves a thread of Christianity through all of the subjects and teaches the students not mere facts, but instructs them in the ability of thought and analysis. That's classical education and what we intend to do with it. Now the reality, the business side of it is we also uh, want to get our accreditation which if we go this way, we will not have to go through the school district, but we can go through other means to achieve our accreditation. It also means it will provide hope the unique distinction in the community of the public, charter, and private schools in the area to stand out from the rest and bring a systematic effort to provide exceptional academics, Christian values, and amazing joy to our student body. And we have had a partnership with Hope Lutheran here at St. John's, and in the past, We've done a lot, but Hope is urging you to consider partnering with them in this venture. We need to raise $20,000 for the first phase of the transition, and we would ask you to consider doing that. I know I'm excited about it. I've looked through the curriculum. I'm just ecstatic about what we can achieve, both through the curriculum and through the community and getting our name out there again. And so I would uh, hope that you would consider that Information is in the bulletin who you can reach out to. If you have any questions for me after the service or whenever, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll answer any questions you have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, great opportunity for our churches to partner together. Good, good thing. Last week, uh, we invited you to an event tomorrow night. It's our first of four summer nights of prayer. On uh, page 288 of the Lutheran service book, uh, in the pew racks before you, there's a litany of prayer. It's very short, four or five minutes, and then we'll have prayer prompts as we pray for our nation, our families, uh, for those who are far from Jesus. We'll pray for those who are sick. We'll ask God to care for our church and churches. We'll pray for uh, our neighborhoods, and this one especially, the needs of many. And at the end, those that want to stay, um, the elder on duty and I will uh, have prayer for healing and anointing up by the altar. That'll be a, a private thing where uh, we'd love to, to raise your needs. If it's um, healing uh, in the spiritual realm, spiritual healing, emotional, physical, or healing of relationship, or if you want to stand in for someone who is ailing in some way, we would love to ask God's power upon you and ask that he would bring healing and make his presence with us. 
So try that out. Come join us tomorrow night. We will warm the place up for you. It's going to be at 7 o'clock, but we'll have air moving. And uh, love for you to be a part of it. Grateful to our praise team for walking us into worship today and leading the way, and our tech team as well. Last week, we uh, turned to Paul's words. He was appealing to people who had once pushed him away. And uh, he urged them and urges us to see people anew, to see them as God sees them. We found that the love of Christ controls us in how we love each other with our words and our actions. Today we turn to our gospel lesson that you'll hear in a few minutes. We join the disciples in a storm that could swamp their boat. And they ask Jesus, teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? Jesus will answer that question with his life and um, among them. And uh, he did that for us as well. I look forward to sharing that with you. But now I invite you to stand as we join in our invocation. A reminder that when God claimed you as his own in baptism, he placed his name upon you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We sing together. Our opening song this morning, Christ our hope in life and death. The chorus, we repeat the word hallelujah a few times. And if you remember, hallelujah means praise the Lord. So when we sing those words, sing hallelujah, we're singing praises to our God um, who gave his son um, for our lives, not only in this life, but the life to come. So Christ our hope in life and death. What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone, what is our hope? seated as we turn our hearts now in a time of confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
We pause now in a time of uh, private prayer and reflection. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. I invite you to stand with me. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We pray. Almighty God, in your mercy guide the course of this world so that your church may joyfully serve you in godly peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Together we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. We remain standing to sing. seated as God comes to us now in his inspired word. Amen. 
The first reading is from the 38th chapter of Job, beginning at the first verse. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? And who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all of the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the seas with the doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the sixth chapter of 2 Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. Working together with him then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain, For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity of knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying, and behold, we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own afflictions. In return, I speak as to children, widen your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tanya, thank you. I invite you to stand with me in honor of the Holy Gospel. Our gospel today comes from the fourth chapter of Mark. On that day when evening had come, He said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. As the ushers come forward for the offering plates, uh, we are reminded as a part of our worship, our giving, our time, our talents, our influence, all help in that effort of connecting others to Jesus, that they may follow him as their savior as well.
and singing on this song. It goes like this. mercy and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. I have to remind myself to stand where the camera can see best. Sorry about that. For those who join us online, our sermon today from the gospel, Do You Not Care? A question that comes across many minds. But I want you, without looking back to the text, think through what you heard just minutes ago. When did fear hit a peak in this account in Mark's gospel? Was it during the storm or after? When did the fear hit its peak? The 12 and any that were following across the Sea of Galilee had legitimate worries and concerns. Three of them were professional fishermen Peter, James, and John, and they knew when it was time to be concerned, right? These waves are going into the boat. It is filling. They likely, having been taught by their fathers, the trade, who were taught by their fathers, they likely had family members who had been lost in the fishing industry. They probably, uh, swapping stories with all the other fishermen, knew that lives had been lost. The Sea of Galilee is in a low setting with mountains around, and so there are times, uh, even today, when the winds pick up quickly and race across the waters, creating sizable waves. The boats then were low, lying, so that they could get the nets in and out. And so they knew they were in great peril. They had legitimate worries. We may think, you know, a storm. It's not, uh, you know, one of the oceans. It's a fairly large lake. But we have to recall, no motor, no backup trolling motor, right? Uh, No Coast Guard and no sat phone or radar, uh, radio contact to call in for help. No emergency boats that inflate within seconds as a backup. They didn't have GPS. No Fitbit. You're just adding that. Um, so they don't, they don't get credit for the rowing. No, uh, no flare gun. They know they're in trouble. Mark tells the story this way. And he, Jesus, was in the stern. He's at the back of the boat, asleep on a cushion. All this commotion going on. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? Don't you care about us at all? It's really their question. It's pointed. They're under stress. And this is how they're dealing with it. Again, when did the fear hit its peak? Was it during that time or after the storm? I believe Mark is signaling for us the growth of the 12. They have seen miracles. They've seen Jesus speak with authority like none other. After all, they've left their nets to follow him. So they see something very valuable in him. But they don't have the full sense of who's in the boat with them yet. They were good 
Hebrew believers, and they knew the Hebrew texts, and there is only one who is worthy of our worship, right? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we know in the Gospels that the wise men came to Jesus' manger and they worshipped him just days old. The leper who had his skin disease healed worshipped Jesus and Jesus accepted it. The synagogue ruler sent for Jesus. My daughter is near death. In fact, she dies and Jesus raises her to new life. And the synagogue leader worships Jesus. You recall the Canaanite woman, Jesus and the twelve kind of leave Israel a bit. They step out of the the boundaries of Israel because the crowds were so great. They're having a meal, and a woman comes and says, My daughter is possessed by a demon. It's ruining her life. Will you help? You remember Jesus, he says, I can't give the bread that is, is for God's people Israel. And she says, but master, even the dogs eat the crumbs from beneath the master's table. And he's stunned by her faith and heals her daughter, casting out the demon. The man who once was blind worships Jesus. The women at the tomb, when they know Jesus has risen from the dead, worship him. So something's going on in the boat, and it's going to dawn on the twelve. When did the fear hit its peak? When the storm was raging or when it had been calmed? Mark tells the account this way. And he awoke, Jesus awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And I don't think he had to yell it, but he said it loud enough to be heard over the storm because the disciples record it. And the wind ceased And there was a great calm. You can imagine how quiet it became. They probably were hearing their heartbeat, though, in their ears, the adrenaline still pumping. They knew they had just been near death. He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Are you not believing me? Are you not trusting in me? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? They knew the answer. God who had called all things into existence, one after the other, and said it's good. It is in fact very good. That was the one enfleshed in the boat. The one who had created all things was among them, having taken on human flesh. And he'd been teaching in their midst, and now he says to the wind and the sea, be calm, and they are. Paul would come to know these truths. He was uh, one of the later apostles that God hand chose. And he says of Jesus, for by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And it was good. That's the one who's just calmed the waters. And they have insinuated quite clearly and quite pointedly to the creator of our world, God himself. Do you not care for us? Great fear comes upon them. God has made his presence with us in this storm. Do you not care? Jesus could have had a long conversation. What if I told you uh, you're already perishing in your sins and trespasses? In fact, my father sent me as a ransom for many, and I would give my life for you to have life and life eternal. Do I care if you're perishing? I most certainly do, and I'm taking action. None of us will get out of this life alive. That's a given, unless Jesus returns early. 
and uh, we'll be ready for that. He's called us to be ready. But one of the graveside prayers in the Lutheran service book starts this way. O Lord Jesus Christ, by your three-day rest in the tomb, you have hallowed the graves of all who believe in you, promising resurrection to our mortal bodies. They were worried that he was asleep on the job at the back of the boat. He wasn't. He came to give his life. And as he laid in that tomb, it wasn't the kind of rest where we go, wow, that's restorative. He was dead in a grave because he took into himself your sin condition and mine and all our trespasses, and he faced his father's anger and wrath and justice, and he took it for us, and his rest in the tomb wouldn't end that way because his father would call him from the grave, and he's promised that life to all of us in Christ as well. Jesus, we don't get a, a text of, this is what he told them, explain everything to you, but he would answer. He would answer their question, do you not care if we are perishing? He'd answer it with his life among them and with his teaching and life that was given for them and for us. You and I face life every day and we have legitimate worries and concerns too. Will the nest egg hold out? Will there be enough to keep paying the bills? Insurance costs, they're not going down. Will they bury us? Will they sink the boat, if you will? My kids aren't walking with Christ. That's a worry. The diagnosis. We pray for many today who face those diagnoses that pull the rug out from under us. Will those struggles in my marriage grow? Will they intensify? Stress loads at work, it ruins sleep, and then we don't eat right, and we know that leads to all kinds of debilitating diseases. As we grow older, we face that decline in health and in energy. Those are legitimate concerns in this life, just like the disciples had legitimate concerns as well. This isn't a uh, sermon of here's six steps to no longer have anxiety and worry. But it is a foundation to trust our Savior Jesus. God himself who took on flesh to live among us and who gave his life as a rescue for us. It's that foundation that helps us in those uncertain times that life provides every one of us. You see, death would not hold Jesus wasn't strong enough. Our greatest enemy will not hold us either because he has promised to raise us from the dead. Teacher, do you care if we're perishing? He does. His life and his words tell us the truth. On Saturdays, Lori and I love to step back from work and just enjoy uh, God and his gifts, and I was out walking by the canal yesterday, and I love to listen to uh, Pastor Matt Peoples. He's a uh, pastor of uh, Bethlehem Lutheran in Ridgeway, uh, New Jersey. And he was on a different topic, but I love this quote. The problem before you, and we all have them, the problem before you is not greater than the God beside you. Not even close. Jesus, uh, in his last hours of teaching before he would be uh, put on trial and then executed before his resurrection, he said to the disciples and he says to us today, if you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. 
And today when you come to this rail, you'll receive Christ's very body and blood. And he unites himself with you, a reminder, I am with you always in those legitimate concerns that nag at us and keep us awake at night. Our God is with us and in us. That's that foundation, that rock of Jesus' teaching we can move forward even in those great difficulties because he is with us and he's already secured our eternity. What a gift that the one who said, be still, who said, peace, and there was calm, speaks into our lives as well. He says, you can trust me. I've got this and I've got you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me? We'll pray. Gracious God, we pray for those among us today and those online who are truly facing difficulties, sometimes pain that they never imagined would come into their lives, sometimes brought by others who simply push your will away and others suffer. We know, Lord, you're in the boat. You who called all things into existence, Lord Jesus, the one who death could not hold, you are with us. You've poured yourself into us by your Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, again, to trust your word of promise, to believe you, to have faith that the one who came to give his life indeed cares if we're perishing and you came to give us life. Lord, grow us to to cling to all those promises of your great might and your great love. In Jesus' name, amen. As we stand together, we're bold to uh, share our faith, uh, shared faith today in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for joining in that. You may be seated as Mark comes forward and he'll raise the prayers of the church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the great mercy shown in sending Jesus Christ, your Son, to save sinners. You have made him our brother by his incarnation and reconciled us to yourself in his blood, joining us to your name in holy baptism. You have sought us, found us, and saved us from destruction. Work in us true repentance that we may continually be filled with heavenly joy together with all your saints. Lord, we give you thanks for fathers. Give them confidence in their situation and zeal for their task to care for their families faithfully. Make them examples to their children of godly life and love for your word. Bless their work of bringing up children in the fear and instruction of the Lord and give them the comfort of your absolution over all their shortcomings. 
Heavenly Father, you show your merciful kindness to all, to all your saints, and to the lost and erring, and to all who request our prayers. We pray for Anaya, the granddaughter of Sheila, for her spiking fever. We just ask you to be with them. We pray for Michelle Watkins for healing. We pray for Linnea Dini, hospitalized with pneumonia and infections. And we pray for healing in God's peace and strength for Linnea Hans and all their family. We pray for healing from heat exhaustion and heart attack for Joel, a friend of Jim and Renda Simon. We pray for all the Didi family. We pray for God's peace and comfort to them after Devin's recent call to heaven. And we ask you to be with them and allow them to know that you are watching over them and you're standing beside them. We pray for Betty Mead, for healing of her broken ribs and for doctors to find the best treatment for her irregular heartbeat. We pray for Cecilia Weinkoff for relief from pain she has been experiencing. And we pray for Dennis McNamara. In addition to heart problems, Dennis now is hospitalized with trial and with, with breathing issues. And we ask God to give Dennis and his family the peace and strength as he goes through these trials. Lord, we give you thanks. <clears throat> for the opportunity of Jacob and Morgan Prowley to be among us here in Ottawa Falls during BBS and that he's coming to also serve as a DC, DCE intern uh, after Morgan completes her internship. We pray for their upcoming move to Ottawa Falls to go smoothly and we ask you to be with them. Lord, we offer up all who are suffering whether it's illness or isolation, unemployment, or loss of a loved one, or any difficulty they face, we just ask you, Lord, to use each of us to minister to them and to, to, sh and to show them your love for them. We pray for health and unity and peace for our country and wisdom for all our leaders. And we ask for God's strength for Russell and Kami and Tyler, Carolyn, Debbie, and all others facing long-term health challenges. We just ask you to be with them and give them peace. We pray for Stephen Ministry and for the caregivers and for the care receivers. We ask you, Lord, to work through this ministry to allow your will be, to be done. We pray for Linnea, Mark, Bernie, Ashlyn, and Mark Garner, and all those battling cancer. We pray for healing and minimal adverse side effects for their treatments, and that your will will be done, and peace and strength will be given to them as they fight their, their cancer. Lord, we offer up safe we offer safety and health for our country and its leaders. We pray for our police officers, our active duty military and their families. We pray for first responders and firefighters and veterans. We pray for the unemployed and those who are homeless or in prison or in a hospital and those dealing with grief and those fighting addiction. We just ask you to be with all of these and to give them peace and comfort. Lord, we also pray for our homebound. We pray for Rose Call, Yvonne Lanier, Shirley Maloney, Ed and Marlene Ladina. We pray for Marguerite Erickson, Maxine Mikeley, and Tally Peterson. We also offer up today, Lord, Pastor Robin Dougal, who's at Our Savior Lutheran Church in McCall, Idaho. We just ask you to be with him and give him strength to spread your word to those in that area. 
We just ask you, Lord, to be with all of these and to give them comfort. Heavenly Father, we also thank you for giving faith to all who commune this day and that receiving Christ's true body and blood that we may be certain that our sins are taken away by his death. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we all like sheep have gone astray, having allowed ourselves to be led away from the right path by Satan and our own sinful flesh. We beseech you graciously to forgive us all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that we may abide in your word and in true repentance and steadfast faith Continue in your church into the end and obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we come to this meal today, we come with joy. Jesus truly gives his true body and blood to us, and therefore it's an important meal. It's a meal for uh, the family of Christ, those baptized believers. And because of the importance of, of what God does through this meal, we ask that uh, only those who have been trained in an understanding of what they are receiving would, would uh, come for that and we'd love to train you if you don't have that training now. Um, but you're also welcome to come to the altar. And once uh, everyone's kneeling, if you simply would like uh, God's grace and blessing placed upon you, you can just put one hand across your heart and we'll serve you that way. Um, are there any who would like to be served in the pews today? Because we, we'll do that early instead of at the end. Anybody we can bring it to? Okay, very good. If you change your mind, let one of the ushers know. But we stand for the words of institution. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after the supper, he took the cup. And again, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for the remission, the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you for sharing that. You may be seated as we invite the praise team forward for the meal.
stand in prayer. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join our voices in the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We remain standing and sing that uh, song that was uh, introduced to us at the beginning, Let the Redeemed. Street. 
here are sending, you're welcome to follow me out. Uh, the door at the front, if you go left, just be careful down those stairs or down these stairs. And uh, we will dedicate the sacred art. And there's some good eats that we'd love to share with you a few minutes after that. We'll get it out there fast. Jesus is active in our world. Go and join him. Thanks be to God.